Hi everyone, I'm Leandra from Paper Artsy and today I've got a video for you all about gels. Gels and mediums has been a topic on the Paper Artsy blog recently and I th really think it was worth a video because it is quite hard to get your head around all the different products out there, how they work, what you can do with them and it's really hard when you're buying to know um, with an unopened tub what the actual product's going to look like on the inside. So I'm going to give you a few tips and show you um, some of the products that I use quite regularly. Now let's start out with um, Ranger. They've got a, quite a small tub compared to some of the others on the market, but um, their multi-medium is available in two different products. It, it's available as a gloss and a matte. Now, um, it's interesting that they've called it a medium because really it's a gel um, and there is a difference. Um, I think if you've watched my mediums video, I think that when we think of mediums, we tend they tend to be pourable products um, and gels are much firmer. So their multi-medium is kind of in between. It's not quite pouring consistency, but it's not quite a gel either. Um, and this is another one that I quite like of theirs, which is... Um, also a glaze really, a glue and seal, you can glue with it or you can seal with it. So it's um, it's a, you know quite a nice consistency. I really like this sort of consistency to glue down papers because it's just got enough oomph in it that um, it sticks papers really effect effectively. Whereas a glaze, which is quite thinner, is better to use for tissues. Um, so their mediums are very similar in consistency to this product here, their glue and seal. Uh, you know, I can't really tell a massive difference between those products uh, and I use them all a lot. It's, so at the end of the day, it's whether you want a matte finish or whether you want a gloss as far as those go. DecoArt have also got a matte medium. Um, again, it's, it's even more runny than the Ranger one. So I would tend to think, you see, this is quite pourable. I would really put this more like, more like a glaze. Um, and I probably wouldn't be as comfortable using that on paper to stick down papers. I would be happy using it with tissues. But anything that's a bit more substantial, it's just a little bit wussy, not quite got the grunt that I prefer. But, you know, gels and mediums are a very personal thing, and really it's what you like that matters. So if you like that thickness, then go for it. So that's the deco art one. Um, Dreamweaver also has um, a product which they call a paste. Now, in my book, pastes are opaque. And um, so, you know, your grunge paste or your texture pastes or um, they all tend to have molding pastes. They all tend to have a, a level of opacity to them, which is why they tend to be called a paste. They've called this a translucent embossing paste. And I think it, and it is, it's a gel. It's got some texture to it but because it's I think they've called it a paste because it's got um, a good amount of structure to it so in um, golden terms this would be more like a heavy gel and I'll explain how golden name there's in a minute but that's quite a nice texture it's going to hold its form quite well and if you're using that through a stencil you're going to get some nice effects so that is in in my book much more like a gel but it's a really nice product to work with and it's got a reasonable amount of a gloss sort of finish to it so it's a bit more like a heavy body gloss gel um, it, this, is, this is why it gets so confusing because every manufacturer has their own terminology um, in the fine art world, it all tends to be pretty consistent. So um, this, the golden system is the one that most people tend to be familiar with. And golden is a fine art company. They produce artist grade products. So with all of the golden products, they are going to be UV safe. That means that if you use them to seal a painting and you have your painting hanging on the wall and the light, direct sunlight comes in onto that painting, your work underneath will be protected because of the UV um, re resistance that's built into this product. So they're an archival product and they're going to last for a very long time. So if that's important, those features are important to you, then it's worth paying the extra for a brand like this. Now. Um, how do they work their naming system? Well, once you understand it, it's quite simple. That starts with the consistency of the product. So soft is very loose, regular, then they actually have another one in the middle here called heavy, 
they have an extra heavy and now they have this one called high solid gel so as you progress through those um, through those different categories the gel consistency gets firmer and firmer in addition to that it's either a gloss or a matte finish so when we refer to a matte gel it's because it's a very dull finish it's got a little bit of chalk in the product which means it's not so shiny um, and the gloss finishes obviously are really glossy now they also have a semi a semi gloss so they also have another all of these available as a semi gloss which is like a satin finish so let's just take a look at what they're actually like to work with Okay, so as you can see with the regular gel, it's got that quite chalky look to it, which is, um, if you read their literature, that's what they say, a matte gel has the smallest amount of chalk, which stops the gloss light reflecting back at you. Um, and it goes, all of these go on chalky and dry clear. But this will dry with a very dull effect. Now it's still got quite a reasonable amount of structure to it for a soft gel. That's, that's holding quite... Um, you know a, a good amount of structure so um, you know it's way way um, thicker than some of the other products that we've looked at um, but it's a great one to work with and let's just show you the gloss in comparison so the gloss does tend to be a little bit runnier gloss the gloss gels are always just a little bit softer a little bit smoother than the matte so from one product to the other there is a slight difference but you can see it's really um, almost sort of like a well not quite a pouring cream but it's kind of like a thick cream consistency so what do you do with this well if you want to extend your paint I'm just gonna move these out of the way a bit here if you want to extend your paint you can easily mix it in with a gel so let's just put a tiny dot of paint in with that. So this is an opaque Bora Bora. And you can quite easily mix that in with your gel. And look at how quickly it extends the pigment. So where I only had one dot of paint, I've now got a whole palette full of paint to work with. So if you're using this as an undercoat or you're wanting to put some paint through a stencil, it makes sense to mix your paint with a gel and then apply it because you're going to make it go a whole lot further and it doesn't compromise the color of the paint that's the whole point of a gel and that's what gels are for they are to change the consistency of your paint so if you move up the scale from a soft if you move up to a regular or an extra heavy you're going to have way more thickness to play about with so let me just show you the regular Okay, so this is regular, and look, it's lots thicker. That's the matte, though. So the regular of the soft would be a little bit looser than that. And then let's take a look at the extra heavy. Now this one's a gloss. You see, it's got great structure. It's really easy to play about with and you can create all kinds of texture with that so you know artists use it if they're doing waves or clouds or they want some sort of texture in the background it's really really cool for abstract art if you're creating paintings that you really want texture then this is the sort of thing that you want to work with so if you've got a little bit of paint mixed in with that again you're extending it but you're not having to waste loads of paint so it just acts as a carrier and because it dries clear it also um, the color of the paint if it softens out a little bit when you mix it in sometimes it can look a little bit lighter because of how it looks milky when it's wet but once it's dry the true color of the paint will become apparent again and if you've mixed our paint which is matte with a gloss like this one then when that dries it's going to dry with a lovely gloss finish so it's a great way to change the type of paint that you have uh, it just gives you all kinds of cool options that you have and then let's look at the high solid which is the last one on the scale I love gels there's just so much you can do I think from when I first started crafting gels were the things that I just used to use more, more than anything so this one's a high solid and again it's a gloss so it's just much um, thicker again 
but they're really smooth they're just like silk or butter this one's like they're kind of like a frosting but this one's just um it the type is it's heading in towards the molding paste type zone because golden also do pastes and they have a light molding paste and a heavy molding paste and this is heading into that zone it's a little bit claggy a little bit sticky and you can just feel that it's got that cool texture this would be just fantastic on a background and a journaling page and it's going to be really cool through stencils too and again of course you can tint it now you can also add other items to your gels so you can add um, you know glitter or mica flakes or you can change the color of them with all sorts of products you don't just have to use paint you can change the color of them with pigments you can use things like your um, brush o pigments and the powder pigments they're fantastic for changing the color of these as well now before we move on I've got one last one here to show you there's a whole new range of gels that have come from um, the Prima line the art basics range and um, they've also got a gloss gel and it's just interesting to sort of have a look and see how some of these compare this is their high so they call it 3D gloss gel. It's a bit softer. So even though it's 3D, 3D it's not quite as um, structured as these golden ones here. But still you're going to get a nice um, effect through a stencil with that product. And you can see that it's going to have a gloss finish because you can just tell when you look at it in the tub compared to the matte ones which do have that much duller look to them. So that's the, um, the Prima one. And they're the same size tub. And over here in England, they're pretty much the same price as a Golden um, because we've got all the import duties and what have you that go on top of it. So uh, possibly in America, I don't know if the two, two are quite different in their pricing. Um, so also I did say to you about inclusions. And you can put really cool things into your gels, but you can also buy them ready done for you. And I've got two examples here from Golden, a clear granular gel and a glass bead gel. So they're both slightly different. The clear granular gel is quite chunky. The beads in this are quite large. So they're really um, quite big beads in that. And this is fantastic uh, if you're doing an effect and you want to spray over the top of it. So for example here I've used the clear um, granular gel and that's got a, a Lindy Stamp Gang spray over the top, two colours actually. And when you put a spray on top it really sinks down into the texture. But obviously the beads dry clear. This is the same thing here and it's got brushos spray um, water on watercolor paper it's got brushes just with a brush um, mixed with I probably spritzed with water and then just applied the pigments around and about so it's this nice texture and it really highlights quite well um, when you use a, a paint or a, a glaze would also look really cool over that um, this one here is the Dreamweaver translucent embossing paste and you can see I've applied it really thickly there and when I pulled off the stencil I got this almost um, outline as the you know when you lift it off and it goes well that kind of happened and I got that really cool little outline and then that was the leftover I just put it through again uh, but you can see that it's nice and glossy so and then this one down this end is the Prima 3D gloss gel it's actually, I probably didn't have apply it very thick because it's not looking very 3D, but you can sort of see that it's a similar glossiness to the Dreamweaver product. Okay. It is quite good running little tests like this just to see how things, how they look. And here's the same ones. This is the other half of the sample. So this is the same products but used with um, the Lindy Stamp Gang sprays over the top just to see how they pick up the colour. Okay, so that's the granular gel. Now obviously it will dry clear and this little section here is the how they dry clear. So you can, um, it's very, very hard um, probably for the camera to pick it up. But just next to it is the next one I'm going to show you, which is the glass bead gel. Now these are really, really tiny little beads, tiny little no-hole beads. 
So those are the two products, but this is just to show you that they both dry clear, the, the gel that they're in. And they're in quite a glossy sort of a gel. Now let me show you the glass bead stuff, just so you can see how different it is. So there they are in the tub. And the glass bead stuff, it's almost got a blue tinge to it, like the um, from the glass, I imagine. And if I just pull a little bit out onto the palette here, it's much, much finer. Okay. But they're really cool and they're cool when you tint them. So to tint something like this, you could use a dye, you could use a bit of your pigment, your re-inkers, um, and you could use paints quite happily as well. So those are gels with inclusions, but they also have at Golden some really interesting gels with inclusions, and they're kind of the next price bracket up because they've got an expensive product in them. And when you start putting really chunky mica into a gel it starts to really knock the price up now this is a black mica and um, when you apply this it's on my tag here it's that area there so it can look quite um, shiny almost but it's in a gel and it's can you can sort of make it quite flat um, and you can spread it out so that you've just got sort of shards of it. And on the front of the tub here, there's always, um, Golden are really good at giving a little sample of what the product looks like. So if you're in a shop looking at these products, you actually do get a sense of what they're like. Now in the same vein as this, that's the black mica, they've also got gold mica. And so these are gorgeous because they're really cool flakes. Like proper chunky sort of flakes that they've got in there so there's they've got these in two sli sizes the small and the large and this is how they look on the tag here so that's the large and over here is the small and I just apply them with my finger and then sort of spread them out a little bit um, so that you don't have loads I think they look really pretty when you just have a few scattered about and they're in that clear gel and they really do stay quite shiny so those are quite pretty and then they also have a pearl so it's the same thing this is the small size but the pearl is that pearlescent effect so that's all the gels with inclusions now the last thing I've saved till the end is the clear tar gel and clear tar gel is a really cool product so I'm just going to clean up my palette and show you how that works Okay, so I've saved the best till last, the Clear Tar Gel by Golden. This is a unique product to them. I've not seen or come across anything quite like it um, from other suppliers. And apparently if you go online and have a good route around, you can find out that they developed it um, for the Jackson Pollock type effect of flicking and um, splatting and dripping and all that kind of thing. So it's a really unusual product. It dries like a skin and it has a very very shiny glossy finish to it but it's just like syrup so it's so um, pourable and drippable and it has you get all these little squidgy lovely little drizzly bits that are quite cool and that's what we want to try and get um, using this product well that's what I've that's pretty much the main thing that I've used it for really is um, getting sort of drizzly drippy bits but it's nice to tint them and it doesn't take much at all so again while we've got this paint out just a little drop of that and you add it in there and you're going to get a gorgeous blue shiny drizzly drippy finish which is just quite cool you can it takes a while to sort of get used to controlling it but I find if you just sort of layer it up on your palette knife like that and then start tinting your brush and then just your palette knife and then just sort of start to um, let it fall off and you'll pretty soon start to get the hang of how how to drizzle it across but it's nice and you can even um, do do actual handwriting with it if you're if you get the hang of it you see how you can kind of control it like that so it is a lot of fun to play with now one of the other things 
is really nice to mix in with it is Golden's own um, paints and I've got um, three or four of these in the online shop and they're hugely metallic and they're this is because they're so fine and I've got bronze silver copper and a lovely black one called micaceous iron oxide and these are really great fun to work with as well because they're just so shiny and look at that and so of course you're extending the use of your paint again I mean the pigmentation and the metallic nature of that is stunning and that will dry the same way with that gorgeous gold finish and so you can then you know create your lovely little drippy bits with that so that is quite a cool product um, I've seen online and I've put it in a blog post on the Paper Artsy blog recently where um, somebody's used this and then actually applied gold leaf to it afterwards because it does have an inherent sort of sticky nature to it so you can quite happily um, let it dry up and then stick gold leaf to it and get gorgeous variegated effects using gold leaf as well but one of the other things I've experimented with and it's still an experiment because I haven't quite finished it is making a skin using an embossing folder so this one here I've just started pulling this up and it's very very delicate and I think what I need to do is apply another layer if I was careful I could probably pull that off but I think what I need to do is apply another layer of the clear tar gel to this as it's just straight onto an embossing folder and then it will just have a little bit more structure so that I can actually pull it off quite easily I'm gonna put a bit of blue on there too because I think it will look quite go good with the gold and the blue And that will probably take sort of like overnight to dry. But I was just a bit stingy with it when I did this last night. But pretty cool. And don't forget when you put it on, if you want the correct side showing when you pull it off, then make sure you put it on the right side of your embossing folder. Otherwise you'll end up with the reverse. But that's going to be cool. And when that comes off, that's how it's going to look, how it's looking there now, because that is dry. Um, and it will also be really cool to sort of just cut up or tear up because it's very very flexible now this one here I did this one slightly thicker and I've just started pulling that off and I wanted you to see how a skin kind of looks and you can use this product also for image transfers so look at how shiny it still is it maintains all that pretty cool huh so that's going to be fun and if you want to stick that down onto something then you just need to use regular gel or you could use more of your clear, clear, clear tar as well but you can get really great structure to it and I quite like the contrast that I've got I used a bit of cheesecake mixed into the clear tar gel as well um, and I quite like the contrast you get from the gold to the um, to the matte colour so that's going to be a lot of fun. Now I have seen um, skins made with the clear tar gel using images from like magazines. Um, so you can also do it that way if you wish. And um, put this stuff on the back of your um, magazine, on the front of the magazine image and then rub the paper off the back. And then you get this really cool flexible skin. Um, on the Paper Artsy blog there are also links to some other videos where a couple of women have been using um, printer's plates, inking them up with printer's ink and then using the clear tar gel on top to make a skin of that. So very similar idea. We've got embossing folders so I kind of thought well that's pretty easy, let's use one of those. Now I just want to finish up by showing you um, some of all of these gel techniques on um, journaling background that I've been working on so there's more information and more step-by-step -step outs of this on the blog on the paper artsy blog for this that goes with this gels um, video but you can see I've got some of the um, clear tar gel drizzled I've also used um, heavy body gel mixed with paint so remember when we made this palette and here we had the glossy gel mixed with the paint so here I've just scraped that on with a palette knife and it gives really cool contrast the way I built up the bright layers in this was by using um, using lots of glazes. So I made glazes using our paints 
and I was always using a gloss glaze and just built up layer after layer of paint and if you, again if you go back onto the um, Paper Artsy blog for this post, the links at the bottom of the video, you'll see how this developed over time. Now there are heaps of textures in this background here. There are crackles in the background, um, clear crackle texture paste by Prima. Um, we will do another video on pastes because it just fits in with this whole theme. Um, and there's lots of gels, there's a bit of stenciling, I've got some gel um, going through a stencil here, um, and using the glazes. So I hope that inspires you to have a go at playing around and being a bit brave with gels. It's fantastic if you like abstract things because you don't have to sort of create anything very structured. You can be really random about it. Um, and gels really are fun. You just have to jump in and have a go. You can't go wrong. So thanks for joining us here on the Paper Artsy YouTube channel. We look forward to seeing you again very soon.